Hey, it's Mike here, and today, the Nipah virus. I know, why am I talking about another virus? You probably don't wanna hear about that, but hey, after the recent lockdown in Kerala, I went down a rabbit hole, and you can enjoy the fruits of my ADD fixation on the virus. <laughs> but we're gonna quickly learn about what the virus is, its connection to animal farming, and you know whether or not it's a big enough threat for the next pandemic. And let's just not get too stressed here. That outbreak in India has ended. However, it's like the fourth one in five years. We just need to be educated about this, maybe to lessen the scare factor of this. I'll just call it the nipple virus. Don't do that? Okay, fine, let's go. Nipah viral disease is a zoonotic or animal-based infection that comes from the Nipah virus, though it can spread from human to human. Well, I've seen a lot of like British people say Nipah. It seems to be pronounced Nipah, kind of like, oh my God, I got a spider on my knee, paw. You get it. It's a paramyxovirus, which despite looking like COVID's virus or SARS-CoV-2 with its spike proteins, lipid bilayer and RNA in the middle, it's not closely related to it at all. And in reality, it's not quite as round. Like it looks like this virus has seen better days. <laughs> it's kind of lumpy. Vaccines are being developed, but they have not been approved for humans yet. And in terms of, you know, how much the WHO is looking at this virus, for example, here's Al Jazeera. The World Health Organization has listed Nipah as one of eight priority diseases, alongside Ebola and Zika, that could cause a global epidemic. And outbreaks are somewhat rare. They've been described as rare, but you know, looking at this map, you can see they've happened quite a few times in various areas of South Asia. From the CDC, symptoms generally appear between four and 14 days after exposure. We're talking fever and headache and some COVID-like symptoms like respiratory illness, cough, sore throat, et cetera. And then it can move into the brain where things get bad and that's how people die. But you know, let's not focus too much on that. And finally, depending on on the source, it has about a 40 to 75% fatality rate, as the CDC says. So yeah, and that is really high, which we'll talk about in a bit, being connected to potentially less contagious, but getting our minds around fatality rate, I have to remind us that it is based on known cases. A great illustration of that is earlier in the pandemic, as you can see from this chart, before we had a lot of tests, countries like Italy had up to a 14% case fatality rate with COVID, that's like one in seven. But then with more tests, et cetera, you know, across various countries, it settled in around 1%. It's all about how many we catch. And experts say it's likely that a lot of outbreaks of these are missed in India and in surrounding countries. But it is worth mentioning that Kerala, India, where this recent outbreak was, you know, has good enough surveillance to catch it. And it appears that we have about six cases and two fatalities, so a lower rate than usual, which is at least good. Kerala's hospitals have been overrun with people sick with fear. Nipah virus causes flu-like symptoms and brain inflammation. India's health ministry is trying to quell concerns. They sent teams to monitor for new cases and says the virus has not spread. You know, so they handled it pretty well, probably because it is the fourth time that there's been an outbreak in Kerala since 2018. You know, in one of those outbreaks, 17 out of 18 confirmed cases resulted in death. And that's where I just quickly want to remind people that the lethality of a virus is often inversely associated or really the opposite of how contagious the virus is. And that can be as simple as like, if you're killing the host too fast as a virus, they're not gonna have as much of an opportunity to spread it. But with COVID, for example, asymptomatic spread with people not even realizing they had the disease was probably what made it a global pandemic. All right, now let's get to the origins of the virus and how it has been spreading. And it appears that this is once again, another bat virus in the sense that bats are the natural host or spreader of the virus initially at least. However, pigs, as we'll get to, are a huge part of this. But in this case, it is fruit bats or flying foxes that are the carrier for this. And it's bats' unique immune system where they can be sort of holding onto these viruses without even being officially infected to the point where they have symptoms, which is crazy. But anything like fruit bat saliva or excrement on it can just become a Nipah bomb. So if you have a farm or a human population where you're getting, you know, either a dropped piece of fruit that the fruit bat ate partially or the fruit bat is just swooping in and pooping like there you go that can start it and fruit bats doing just that around pigs is exactly how this 
virus was found in Malaysia in 1999 during an outbreak from this study. 265 individuals fell ill, 105 of which passed away. Consequently, over a million pigs were culled. Gosh. No, and that's really recent as far as virus discovery goes, just a little over two decades. And now we're at about 638 total cases with 378 deaths in terms of worldwide modern data. And while cows, horses, and maybe goats can spread it, pigs are the main concern here, it appears, just in terms of the way that they contract it and can spread it. You know, in the past, when there's been a pig outbreak, even 100% of the pigs on a farm have been infected. But then, you know, maybe the majority of them won't even have symptoms. In this paper, quote, a high proportion of pigs were infected asymptomatically, suggesting silent zoonotic or animal-based transmission. So sort of similar to how COVID spreads, but just with pigs. Now the pigs even cough, which has led to the term barking pig syndrome. I think my wife's got that. <laughs> And as this paper mentions, pigs with Nipah have been deemed an amplifying host, so they actually make it worse, more spreadable. And Nipah has already spilled over from pigs to humans in four different countries, making up you know, a large portion of the total deaths. And from the study, it's clearly also concerned for slaughterhouse workers as well from this outbreak in Singapore. So where did it come from in Kerala? Well, they don't have things pinned down exactly. They are searching for pigs in the area, but they do believe it's likely from people directly consuming palm date sap that was contaminated by either bat saliva or feces. And there are an estimated 90,000 pigs in Kerala, which sounds like a lot. It's enough to make something happen, but compared to like Iowa's 23 million, it's not that much. You know, in a previous outbreak in Kerala, they found some bats that were infected. So they're assuming that that's the cause again, but we don't really know yet. And from NPR, an Indian professor of pathology at the government medical college says that Kerala can't be the only hotspot. And it's possible that the health system in other states may not be catching these infections at all. But if it just went from animal to human and stopped there, like some other viruses do, then we would be a bit less concerned. However, we're also concerned about those evolving. But in this case, yes, it is at the point where it can pass from human to human and has done quite effectively. Quote, once infected, person to person spread is possible with close contact and through nasal and respiratory secretions, blood and urine. No golden showers if you got this anyway from this paper. During an outbreak in Siliguri, India in 2001, 75% of the patients, many of them healthcare workers, had a history of hospital exposure to patients infected with Nipah virus. So that's a good example of human spread. And here's a chart of another outbreak that was person to person, which I think is really interesting to see. This is from Bangladesh. It just kind of spiders out there and they labeled this guy F because uh, yeah, he really effed up. He spread it to like 20 people. Now I wanna look into just the chance of this spreading from any given outbreak to other countries worldwide, etc. And I have been particularly interested in this virus just because I live in Iowa where we produce more pigs than any other state. We have seven times as many pigs as people, at least. So I'm like, if this is pig related, I wanna know about it. However, we can just look to this map of the fruit bat range and see that Iowa is directly in the middle of it. <laughs> no, no, it's definitely localized to South Asia at this point. However, of course it can spread through humans to other places theoretically. And then, you know, if people start shipping pigs that are sick, even if they're asymptomatic, but infected could be an issue. Or if this virus evolves or ends up infecting other species of bats, that is where I get concerned. And then those spread overseas. So I do believe it is possible that indoor factory pig farms, which are everywhere in Iowa and are also in places in Europe, that they can be vulnerable to these bats, especially bat pooping. This study just looked at the general, you know, large factory farm risk of disease for pigs through bats. They, you know, briefly mentioned the Nipah virus. And while they conclude that it isn't a major concern, it is clear that bats do pass through these and in some cases even roost around these buildings. One farm, they actually found bat poop, bat guano in the pig feed. 
Yeah, that's a bit of a red flag or a brown flag, if you will. And so these researchers asked the most important question, really you know, stating it as an unanswered question though, quote, is there a substantial risk of mutation that would improve the efficiency of person to person transmission of the virus? That is the million dollar question. So could it evolve to become more contagious or so hopefully less fatal, which would be the likely scenario if it became more contagious. And we just have to think back to SARS-1, which is, you know, the predecessor to SARS-CoV-2, which caused, you know, the COVID global pandemic. And that was a situation where the first outbreak infected about 8,000 people and killed about 800 people. But then SARS-CoV-2 killed 7 million people roughly today globally. A lot of that was because of that unique asymptomatic spread. And so if a similar thing happened here with Nipah, that would be horrible. Let's just not even go there. But yeah, from this paper, similar to COVID-19, Nipah is a potential virus that may cause a pandemic on a global scale. You know, there's no treatments. And of course that high mortality rate is concerning. And back to Dr. Ara Vinden, we covered earlier. He says, quote, Nipah could emerge as a global problem similar to COVID-19 due to international trade, global travel, and climate change that causes bats to seek new habitats. And we will cover that habitat issue in a second, but I just want to get a sort of uh, dissenting voice, a just totally different opinion here from a local doctor in Kerala. Now to discuss the ongoing situation with respect to the Nipah virus, joining me now is Dr. Rajiv Jayadevan, a member of the Public Health Advisory Panel of the Kerala State Indian Medical Association. To put it in pandemic terms, whether it has pandemic potential, no, right. definitely not. All Nipah outbreaks are self-limiting and localized. They do not spread far and wide, but that, is, that should not stop us from tracking these contacts down and stopping them from potentially infecting other people. Uh, but you're saying that the Nipah virus does not have pandemic potential. Am I correct? It does not. I think he's helped a lot of people over there sleep at night, but let's move on to that sort of climate related issue or really just human encroachment on wildlife environments from this paper that first Malaysia outbreak could be traced to slash and burn deforestation for plantation of palm trees, probably from palm oil there, as well as paper wood, which evicted bats toward mango orchards at the edge of pig farms. And then they point to Kerala outbreaks having to do with natural habitat destruction as well. So it was our encroachment on nature that led to that initial pig outbreak and then also probably forced bats to migrate to then go to these sap farms. And speaking of that, bats can lick the sap that flows into pots on these date palms, which of course can risk saliva and feces and the virus entering these pots. So a solution is to add cheap bamboo skirts, really covers sort of like date sap condoms. But in terms of Malaysia palm plantations, this is one more reason that palm oil sucks because it drives a lot of deforestation in addition to you know hurting orangutans and just being really unhealthy for you. Uh, it is worth just noting from this Oxford study that not only do vegan diets contribute 75% less emissions, they also contribute 75% less biodiversity loss or species extinction driving. In the end, Nipah is just another example of a virus that eating animals puts us at an increased risk of getting, in this case, farming pigs, which are an amplifying host for this virus because they're just like super contagious with their pig barking syndrome, etc. cetera. Uh, yeah, we need to uh, be really aware of this. You know, they're helping that virus spread a lot. And this is just one more reason in addition to how pigs are super intelligent to not be eating pigs. And again, we just have to stop pushing in on these wild habitats because you know, that karma comes right back at us. We destroy these animals and wildlife and then boom, they destroy us. No, I don't think the average person outside of the fruit bat habitat should be particularly stressed about this virus at this point in time. I think it's just really important to learn about this one. And you know, a quick look around, I didn't see any other videos just covering the basics of NEPA in a way like this. So I felt like I needed to make the video. And if I did miss any interesting points here, let me know down below. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.